So in this video, I'm going to teach you the following things. How to tell if you need to rebuild or replace your fresh water pump. The difference between a impeller repair kit, which is a, a major rebuild kit or a impeller replacement kit. How to identify your pump. More importantly, where to get your parts from and what part numbers you need to order or use when ordering this, meaning your pump. My name's Grant. This is my dog, Susie. Hey. Recently I purchased a 1978 Irwin Mark III sailboat. It's a center cockpit. And man is it a project. Follow me as I rehab my boat and sail off into the sunset. So here you can see I removed my pump already. You can also see the person before me used RTV gasket maker or sealant instead of in a gasket. That's a way of doing it. I wouldn't necessarily say it's the best way, but it is a way. So here's my pump, and you can see here where they use gasket sealant. This is the shaft for the impeller. You can see uh, it's keyed here, or it's slotted. There isn't a right way or wrong way, it just needs to be engaged. Right here is a bearing, we'll talk about that later. But this is an area that you want to look around here and on your engine to tell if this gasket right here is bad. Moving on. All right. So now I got my pump off my engine. We're going to look for a couple different things. Right here around this area to see if this front cover is leaking or not. Mine was not. Next thing we look at is is water leaking from these holes. Mine wasn't leaking there. Next thing we look at is these weep holes. There's several around this pump. Right there. Mine was leaking. So in this case. I need to figure out why mine's leaking. If you have water coming out any of these holes or this front cover, you've got a failure and you need to do some repairs. So we'll dig into it right now. Here we go. Before we get going too far, I want to show you the two different types of kits. First one, uh, this is a impeller only replacement kit. You get an impeller, and you get a couple gaskets. They're not even the gaskets for the front cover, but that's what you get. This is the correct one for this pump. I will show you how to identify the pump and what part number to get uh, here shortly. This kit here is a major rebuild kit. So I got a gasket for the front cover, which this one does not have. I got some O-rings if this style has it, which mine doesn't. I actually get a new front cover, a new shaft seal. Here's the impeller shaft, new bearings, a new keyway, bolts, which uh, I'll use the original screws, an impeller, an impeller wear piece. I forget, I forget what this is called, but... Uh, this is a wearable item right here. Again, I will show you the part number later in this video, but uh, that's the difference between a major kit and just an impeller replacement kit. So now you're thinking to yourself, okay, cool, Grant. I know where to look for leaks, and I know the difference between a impeller replacement kit and a major kit. Well, where can I go to get this kit? There's a couple different places. I do a lot of shopping online at Amazon. And again, here shortly, 
I will give you those part numbers. But before you get there, you need to know how to identify your pump. Here's what I did, it's just a way. I went to mkmarine.com. It's spelt E-M-E-K-M-A-R-I-N.com. I'll put a link down below um, so you can go and look for your pump. Mine is actually a Sherwood raw water pump. Um, even if you don't have a Perkins 4108, you should be able to find your pump uh, by using this chart here. And it's my understanding that this manufacturer, M key or M, how you pronounce the name, Mar Marin, what, <laughs> whatever. Anyway, uh, this company is actually the one who manufactures or now owns and manufactures Sherwood uh, raw water pumps. Don't quote me any of that, but that's just one I've been able to find out. All right, continuing. Here we go. So here is a pump identification chart. Also, here is a impeller identification chart. I'll put the link to both of these diagrams down below, as well as the part numbers um, to help you make the correct decision, or at least to help you out with the parts that I ordered during this video for my engine. Like I said, I purchased uh, a lot of stuff from Amazon. The impeller replacement kit, just the impeller itself and a couple gaskets, you can get online for approximately $35. Again, I'll put a link down below. I don't get any kickback, any reimbursements, discounts. It's just a link so it makes it easier for you to find what you're looking for. So here's... The company or the person I bought the impeller replacement kit. You can see the part number right there. It's 3330. This is the one for the G65, I believe it is, fresh water pump. The major uh, rebuild kit, uh, it's a little bit more expensive. It's uh, right at $200, and that may or may not include the shipping. Again, that's on Amazon, and I'll put a link down below. So you can uh, just click on it and get one and know it's the right one. So here's where I ordered the major rebuild kit for a G65 freshwater Sherwood pump. All right, first thing I do is remove these four screws right here for this front cover plate. I'll be honest, they don't normally come off this easy, but uh, I did uh, put some penetrating oil on them and uh, busted them loose before I started this video here. All right, you can see uh, this right here, it says Sherwood. Doesn't say the model number on there. Actually it does. Right here. Maybe this helps a little bit. Sherwood G65. How lucky is that? All right, no O-ring on this. This is just a gasket. Don't put any sealant here. Just only use a gasket, a gasket only. All right, so here's my impeller. You can see that's pretty messed up. See the cracks here? The, the fins are starting to break. So we'll try and get this guy out. All right, I'm gonna pause this video and 
Get her busted loose here. So I had some issues there. I have to replace that seal anyway. So all I did was take a bolt or a punch and I drove this seal and these two bearings out the back side of this pump. The seal is inside there. I'll show you that in just a minute. All right, you can see this impeller is really messed up. And right there is that seal. Notice that the spring in the cup is facing outwards. So it needs to be driven in like this. So this separates the water going into the oil. Because remember the back side here is where the engine is. Yeah, back here is where the oil is at. Right here's the water. This seal separates the oil from the water. This could be a place that uh, if you're getting your oil that's turned into a milkshake, this could be a fail point. Not usually, but it could be. So I'm probably just gonna get a screwdriver or something. Um, maybe even that bolt again. I'll get something different. I'm gonna knock this seal out going that way. All right, there's my little seal. It goes in like this. So now I'm gonna clean up this area here, this area here, this area here, and lightly right here. So um, let's take a look at this piece right here, this wear piece. I don't see any sharp edges or anything. I think we're okay. And there's a screw right here that helps keep this in here um, for replacement. I think that part looks okay. It probably wouldn't help uh, or hurt if I uh, took this piece out, pull the screw first, took this piece out and clean on inside there also. But uh, it looks really good. There's no restrictions. It actually looks real good. All right, let me get that done. One thing I want to note is I used a little wire wheel uh, to clean these two surfaces. Um, not saying that you would, but you could possibly remove a bit more material than what you want. The best thing to do is keep this uh, square and true. So I'm just going to twist this a little bit. See how true mine is. It looks pretty darn good. Same thing on this side, especially because I was prying here. Looks real good. No low spots, no high spots. I'm happy with that. Still got a clean inside here, so uh, let me work on that.
think I'm going to replace this also. Might as well since I'm here. All right, I got it all cleaned up. Looking good. Now I'm gonna install the seal first. I'm gonna set that right there. I'm gonna use a socket. Put that right there. I'm gonna hammer. All right, remember, here we go. The seal and the spring, everything's facing outwards. Remember that. Always, that's gonna screw you. Goes out, out towards the front of the engine, not the back. Now I'm gonna put my new shaft and my new bearings in. Careful doing this, because you don't wanna screw up that seal. Make sure you take the key out before you do that, otherwise it's going to tear that seal up and good luck finding the seal. Press that in there easily, softly, carefully. I'm going to find a little piece of wood. Stand by. Alright, got myself a little piece of wood now. A little bit further. All right, that's in. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like butter. Just make sure you get your bearing flush down there. Let's see if we can show that. I might go one more whack or two. Got my shaft in. It turns very freely. We got my seal in. I got my Key way for my shaft in. Now it's time for the magic. I could use this piece here, this new screw. I'm going to save it. I'm going to use the old one. The old one wasn't leaking. Everything was fine. I'm just going to save this one uh, in case I need it later on down the road. Now for my impeller. These can be a little bit of a witch with the capital B. But uh, just kind of start it like this. Slowly work it in there until you find your, pin, your keyway. Well, 
Well, that's a bummer. Finally got the impeller in. Let me tell you what I did. This keyway kept on falling off the shaft when I was trying to put the impeller in. So I cheated and took this piece out right here, got the impeller in, rotated it around and slowly worked this piece back in and put this screw, this screw right there in. So anyway, it's in. Now all I need to do is put my uh, gasket and my cover on and this thing is ready to go. I highly recommend if you can find another one, keep it as a spare so you can swap it out with the four bolts really quick again. I'd use a gasket here. Do not use silicone. You should never use silicone on an engine, ever, 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 ever. Use RTV or a gasket maker, but never silicone. Anyway, hopefully this helps you out. Um, Again, I'll put the links down below so you can find out the part numbers and where I got them and go from there. Hopefully this video will help somebody out. Uh, at least one person, that's all I want, just one person. Hopefully this will help you. Again, as always, thank you for watching this video. Thank you for all my subscribers. To help me build my channel, please, 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 hit the little like button, leave me a little message, even if it just says hi. That helps the algorithm to get me more viewers to build my channel bigger. If you want to support me other ways, like this sweatshirt right here, Sailing the West Wind, Go to sailingthewestwind.com. It's my website. Go all the way to the right to merchandise. Click on that. There's a whole bunch of merchandise you can choose from. The proceeds from that help me with this project and it helps me with these videos and purchase more video equipment and parts like these for this video. Again, thanks for watching. Take care.